So this time we are in Palo Alto in the Cloudera office. Amre, who are you and what do you do? So I'm one of the founders uh, of Cloudera and I serve as the chief technology officer uh, for the company. Great. What is your background and what did you do before you started this company? So let me go back a little bit, actually. So I'm from Egypt mm -hmm. originally, and uh, I came uh, to the U.S. in uh, 1995, so it's about 20 years ago, uh, to get my uh, PhD degree from uh, Stanford University. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to get my PhD and then go back to Egypt to teach. I really like oh. to teach. That, that was my, my dream when I was young, is I'm going to be a professor and uh, teach, and that's what I want to do. Uh, but then I frequently would say, when I landed in Stanford, the entrepreneurship bug mm. uh, infected me, uh, and I got corrupted, <laughs> <laughs> and I cared more about doing building companies than uh, than teaching per se. So uh, a few years into Stanford, I dropped out from my PhD program, mm -hmm. and I made my first startup, uh, which got acquired by Yahoo. Mm -hmm. So I ended up at Yahoo, and uh, that was a small company. We were about uh, five people, mm -hmm. and we were acquired for $9 million mm -hmm. within one year, which is not bad. Okay. And then I spent uh, eight years at Yahoo before I left Yahoo and joined a VC firm called uh, Accel Partners mm -hmm. uh, as what's called an entrepreneur in residence, mm -hmm. or EIR. Yeah, right. uh, this is kind of a uh, transition role where you go with the VC and you spend some time researching what should be mm -hmm. the thing I should do next. And then uh, after three months with them, they, uh, they gave us funding and Cloudera was uh, started. So that's briefly my history before Cloudera. And uh, two questions. What did you study at Stanford? Uh, so what kind of topic? Yeah. And then the second thing is in, in this uh, Entrepreneur in Residence program, how did you get in touch with Excel? Did you know these guys before or mm -hmm. just by accident? Yeah, that's a very, both are very good questions. So first on the first question, I was in the computer engineering department. And I, I was studying essentially distributed, large-scale distributed systems. Mm. And I was doing my uh, PhD with uh, a professor called Mendel Rosenblum. Mm -hmm. uh, Mendel Rosenblum actually is one of the founders of VMware. Ah. Uh, he's a very nice guy. I can introduce you to him if you want to sure, interview you. him as well. <laughs> uh, he's an amazing guy. So um, I did my PhD. I actually did go back to Stanford and finish my PhD while I was working at Yahoo. So mm. I had dropped out, but I did go back and finish. Uh, so virtual machines and distributed systems is the main uh, topic. And then uh, on the other uh, question about EIR and how do you get to be an entrepreneur in residence, so usually you don't apply to be an entrepreneur in residence. Like VCs don't open like, hey, we are hiring <laughs> EIR. Usually they, the EIR thing happens because of connections mm -hmm. and because the VC knows you from before and they, they want you to come and work with them before you do your next company. Uh, so in my specific uh, situation, uh, one of my uh, previous managers mm -hmm. at Yahoo, he had left Yahoo and joined that firm uh -huh. as a VC. So he was there, he knew me very well yeah. because he was my manager at Yahoo. So when I, uh, when I was leaving, he mm -hmm. said, you have to come here and be an EIR. Uh, my co-founder, Jeff Hammerbacker, who's mm -hmm. a co-founder at Cloudera, he comes from Facebook, mm -hmm. a very similar story. So he was uh, one of the early employees at Facebook. Accel Partners was one of the very early investors in Facebook. So same thing, they knew of him and when they heard he was leaving, they said, hey, come to uh, Excel and work as an EIR. And that's how I connected with, with yeah. uh, Jeff, who's my co-founder. Okay, at great. Cloudera. So you met over there at Excel? Yes, Park. yes. Okay, great. Yeah. And how did you come up with this idea of Cloudera? So it came from uh, directly from uh, my work experience, from my own work experience and Jeff's own work experience. And uh, we have two other co-founders, Mike Olson, mm -hmm. uh, who's uh, our chairman of the board and the chief strategy officer, mm -hmm. and then a fourth co-founder from Google. His name is Christopher Bichilia, though he left he left Cloudera two years in, and he's now doing another company. Mm -hmm. uh, he's also another interesting guy to connect you with if you want to chat with him. Um, so uh, what was the question again? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, we can do this again. No, no, the idea. Where did the idea come from? <laughs> yes. So, so uh, no, it's good. It's good like this. So the idea, essentially, uh, at, in my work at Yahoo, I was responsible for uh, doing BI and uh, data analytics and data mm. science for Yahoo News, Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo Search all the different products that Yahoo has, and they had to do a lot of analysis about what's working, what's not working, yeah. new features when they launch, how effective are they are at retaining our users, et cetera, et cetera. And I had a bunch of challenges in my existing uh, business intelligence data technologies I was using. And at the same time, when I was at Yahoo, I was lucky is that where this other open source technology was being built, which is called Hadoop, is mm -hmm. the name of the technology. And it was being built inside of Yahoo for uh, Yahoo Search to build how to build a web index at okay. scale. But when we talked to that team, it was very clear that that technology 
uh, solves a lot of the problems that we have. Mm -hmm. So I tried that technology in my team, and then very quickly, within a year, it just changed everything I do. Okay. And for me, that was a very clear signal that this is a very good uh, aspirin mm -hmm. uh, for anybody that has the headache of how do I manage big amounts of data or big data as it's known today. Mm -hmm. same, thing ha same thing happened with my co-founder, Jacques Hammerbacker, at Facebook. He used Hadoop in his own infrastructure, mm -hmm. and he saw how effective it was in solving problems for him. Okay, great. Let's talk about the business model of Cloudera. Yeah. How does it work right now? So first, important to note that business models evolve over time mm -hmm. uh, as a function of the company and its maturity and the more you understand your customers and mm -hmm. the more you understand your business. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, when we were first forming uh, Cloudera, our business model was more structured around doing training and doing uh, consulting or professional services mm -hmm. for our mm -hmm. customers. But then it uh, was very clear that you, 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 while you can make a lot of money when you're doing training and consulting, y it's not high margin money because it's mm -hmm. a people business. You have to mm -hmm. go and hire more people to be able to do more consulting and do more training. So the margins are limited, how, how big your margins can be. Mm -hmm. So we uh, changed our business model to uh, be um, a combination of still training and professional services, but also having a software subscription right. uh, business model as well. Uh, so right now we charge our customers as a function of how many servers our software is running on mm -hmm. uh, per year. So it's a subscription, it's a subscription per server mm -hmm. per year. That's how they uh, contract with us today. Uh, I should also note that we had a, uh, a, a pivot shift in Cloudera in our history. Uh, and that's why our name is Cloudera, by the way. So our name is Cloudera is because initially we were going to build this as a cloud platform mm -hmm. where we put our software on the cloud, our customers upload their data, do their number crunching and then yeah. download the results. But within uh, six months of doing that, it was clear that all of the big banks we want to work with, yeah. the big retailers, they were not comfortable giving out their data. Mm -hmm. uh, so we shifted the company from being a cloud company uh, to being a software company. So we give them software that mm -hmm. they can then deploy within their organization yeah. or in the cloud if they want to, okay. but most of them choose to deploy it within uh, right now. Uh, so that was a big shift for us, mm -hmm. to shift from being a cloud company to being a software company. Yeah. But we kept the name Cloudera because it was a cool name. <laughs> okay. What problem does this office uh, solve for your clients? Yeah, it's a very simple uh, value proposition. So if you look at most of the legacy uh, data technology, legacy systems like, uh, for example, Teradata or Oracle mm -hmm. or standard databases, uh, standard databases are very good at handling what uh, we refer to as structured data. Mm -hmm. So it's very well defined data where you have uh, columns and the columns have types mm -hmm. like uh, string for names and then mm -hmm. the date for date of birth and then uh, decimal for an amount for mm -hmm. a salary or something. Yeah. Very well defined, very well structured. And these systems were very good at doing that. But the reality of the, uh, of the world today is we have multiple types of data. Mm -hmm. We have structured data that come from databases, but we have a lot of uh, semi-structured data that come from web servers mm -hmm. and come from mobile devices. And then we have unstructured data like PDF documents or okay. emails mm -hmm. or even images and videos. So future data systems, which is what our system represent, uh, have the capability to absorb any data, whether mm -hmm. it be structured, semi-structured or unstructured, mm -hmm. and then allow you to process that data uh, in many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so in a nutshell, uh, our value proposition is we allow our customers to extract value for their business from all the data that they have, mm -hmm. and then use that data to ask bigger questions than they are able to ask today. And in terms of this unstructured data, like from PDF files, yes. um, how, how do you do you need to teach uh, your algorithm to extract this data and put them from an unstructured uh, in an unstructured way, or is it manually done by, for example, the client who is uh, teaching the algorithm? How does it work? So it's all of the above. So in some cases, okay. there's some standard formats where we already have parsers that know how to parse out the content and read out the content mm -hmm. from from these documents. Uh, so in this case, there is a library. You just pick the parser that applies to the type of document that mm -hmm. you're trying to parse. Uh, but then you could have a more sophisticated uh, document where you're trying to extract the sentiment. There's a doc an email, mm -hmm. and from that email, you're now trying to extract, uh, maybe that email is somebody sent to the support team for a given company, and then you want to extract, was that customer upset? Was that customer happy? Mm -hmm. Was that customer neutral when, when that email exchange took place? So that is more involved. For that, you do have to write code that mm -hmm. do what's called sentiment uh, analysis to extract that. 
And then there's an ecosystem of partners that we work with now, mm -hmm. other companies that are building tools mm -hmm. around our platform that make it easier to do that. Okay. Uh, so for example, there's a company called Trifacta. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a very young startup. There's another one called uh, Tamer, T-I-M-R. Uh, another one called Paxata. There's a number of one now mm -hmm. trying to make it easier to do that. Okay, assuming I have all the data and put it into a data warehouse, uh, what else can the client do then with this data? Is it, are there any kind of predefined reports that I can generate or does the client have to connect all the different data sets uh, so he can get some analysis, insights on that? Yeah, so we are a platform. We are not a front-end application. We are a mm -hmm. platform. Uh, think of us just like a database, mm -hmm. except unlike a database like Oracle, our platform is much more flexible, mm -hmm. so it can take data of any type. Uh, it is much more scalable. It can really scale to massive amounts of data. Mm -hmm. And it's much more agile in terms of, it's not just SQL, you can do SQL with it, yeah. but you can also do search, uh -huh. you can do machine learning, and there is many other types okay. of workloads that you can run. But still, it's a platform. So now how do you connect that platform to applications? Mm -hmm. There is a lot of uh, existing applications that just integrate with our platform. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, companies like uh, ClickTech, mm -hmm. uh, Tableau, uh, MicroStrategy, Informatica, there's a lot of companies out there that build applications that do visualizations okay. and mm -hmm. do data analysis that then connect into our platform using mm -hmm. the APIs that we provide. And are you also promoting in this type of ecosystem where you have different kind of apps that uh, once a um, client subscribed to Cl uh, Cloudera, mm -hmm. that he can choose from different kind of apps how he can analyze the data that he um, yeah, create, generated uh, using um, Cloudera? Yeah, ultimately we want to have like the equivalent of an app store yeah. of big data yeah, where yeah. you just have an app store and yeah, you go yeah. and you click on the icon of the yeah, app yeah. you want. We're not there yet. So yeah. today, today is still an enterprise software sale yeah. okay. where you have to go and talk to that company and sign a contract with them and then get the software and deploy it. So it's a bit more heavy, but hopefully in the future, yes, it will be as simple as within the Cloudera um, uh, management interface, you're going to see a bunch of icons for different apps and you just pick the app that you want, but we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah. How did you acquire the first customer and convince them to buy with you or try you? We, we are lucky in the sense that our business model is also open source in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, so our core product uh, that we release, which is called the Cloudera Distribution for Hadoop, is 100% open source mm -hmm. and it's also free. Okay. So what that helps do is it helps seed the market where developers They look at it, they see it's very powerful, they download it, they start to build apps on it. Mm -hmm. And then once they build an app that is valuable for their business, then they come and they talk with us and say, hey, can we have a relationship with your company mm -hmm. to, con to maintain that software for us going forward? Mm -hmm. uh, so for us, because of the open source nature of Hadoop, the initial customers were just coming to us. Right? They were just coming to us. There was no other vendor out there when we started Cloudera that was supporting the Hadoop platform, we were the only one. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got a lot of our initial kind of growth in the company was organic, just coming from right. customers that deployed our software. Okay. What have been your thoughts on when you started out between bootstrapping the company and taking external money? That's a very good question. So in our case, we, uh, if you follow Cloudera's history, we took a lot of money at yeah. Cloudera. At Cloudera, we actually raised, uh, to date, uh, more than $1 billion dollars mm -hmm. in, in funding, which is a lot of money for a software company. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that comes because of uh, the fact that this is an exploding market. Like we, very quickly, we saw that this market is growing so quick mm -hmm. that technology is, is, is important. But sales, having a sales force that yeah. can really sell this technology worldwide is even more important. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that when you are hiring sales, when you're hiring salespeople, you have to pay their salaries for the first six, even 12 months mm -hmm. before they start making any deals or bringing any money mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. You cannot bootstrap right. when you're doing that. You have to have money to be able to pay their salaries. So from day one, we have been raising money in Cloudera almost every year, like in 2008, uh, we raised five million from Excel Partners, mm -hmm. which I mentioned earlier. Uh, 2009, uh, we raised another six million. 2010, I think we raised like double that, and just like almost every year, we were raising double what we raised the year before, okay. and mainly doing it as a function of we want to continue to grow very, very quickly to capture this opportunity because we see this as a massive opportunity, mm -hmm. and the one who captures the full opportunity mm -hmm. will get the most value in the in the long term. Amr, what what is a typical customer lead time? So it depends. So in some cases, there is customers who already have downloaded our software. As I said, it's open source and free. Yeah. So they already downloaded, they already built an app, it's already running inside their company. 
and they come to us and they say, okay, it's great, we love it, where do we sign? Mm -hmm. And usually that would take like a week until oh, wow. we get them to sign and they, they pay us and it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that used to be the case in the early days mm -hmm. where this technology was still kind of at the beginning and there was lots of early adopters. Okay. Now we are in the later stages where we're moving with this technology into very, very large companies. Mm -hmm. And part of what we're doing is convincing these large companies of, hey, your old way of doing things is not gonna work for you going forward. You need to have this platform and in this case, you have to go in and do what's called a proof of concept mm -hmm. and show them that this platform truly will deliver the, the scalability, yeah. the flexibility of working with any data and the agility of being mm -hmm. able to uh, build new projects very quickly. So that, that process can take anywhere from uh, uh, four weeks to uh, even four months okay. until we can convince them that this is a, uh, a, a valuable system for them. And then that's when they do their first purchase. But our technology is not about the first purchase. Our technology is about how we get that first, uh, first purchase, but then grow it, mm -hmm. right? Because once we get inside of a company yes. and they have 10 servers running our software and they see what these 10 servers can do in terms of scalability and throughput mm -hmm. and, ch and, and economics of storing the data very effectively, mm -hmm. then they start to grow it from there. And that's where our um, um, potential yeah. uh, is much bigger from that, from the expansion that we get from these customers once we land them. Amara, let's talk about corporate strategy. Yes. So, uh, I mean, you have some kind of technology um, part in your company, and then you have this kind of distributional part. Mm -hmm. uh, what other uh, part would, would you think cons or consider in terms of competitive advantage that is needed for your business model? Yeah. And which one is the most important? Yeah, we actually have uh, four pillars that underlie our uh, strategy of how we uh, win in this market. Mm -hmm. uh, both win for ourselves intrinsically, but win against competition as well. And uh, these four pillars are the technology, mm -hmm. the team that we have, uh, the track record, mm -hmm. and the ecosystem. Okay. Uh, so let me talk about these briefly. So technology, simply, our technology needs to be more superior. And uh, in open source, it's tricky. How do you make your technology superior when everything you do, you're putting back into open source? So what we're doing at Cloudera is not everything we're putting back into mm -hmm. open source. We're putting roughly maybe 85% mm -hmm. of what we do into open source, but we're keeping 15% proprietary to us. Okay. And that is very important to maintain uniqueness mm -hmm. for our solution compared to other vendors out there. So there's other companies out there, small companies, but even big companies like uh, IBM, for example, that can come in and just take everything that we do and say, hey, we can do everything cloud that I can do. Their software is all open source. Yeah. But by keeping 15% of what we do proprietary, we maintain that uniqueness of no, we're unique, we're different. Mm -hmm. If you go with IBM or go with some other player, you're not gonna get the full value that you will get if you mm -hmm. come with Cloudera. Uh, so that's number one where we differentiate ourselves. Uh, number two is the team that we have. Uh, so in open source, it is uh, very important for customers that they see that you have in your company uh, some of the open source project leaders that mm -hmm. created this technology. Oh, okay. So in our case, for example, the Hadoop technology uh, was created by Doug Cutting. Mm -hmm. And Doug Cutting, he works at Cloudera. Uh, there is 19 other open source projects, and most of these other projects were either founded by Cloudera mm -hmm. or the creators of these projects, we eventually hired them to work at Cloudera. Okay, so that gives us a lot of value in our customers. They now believe that we can control that open source artifact, mm -hmm. we can add the features they care about, we can fix it when it breaks, and so on. Okay. So that's number two. Number three is the um, uh, track record, mm -hmm. like I mentioned. Uh, so we use our own Hadoop technology, our own data technology. We collect data from all of our customers. Mm -hmm. When our customers are running a cluster, we are collecting data from them into our Hadoop cluster. And that data is not the data, that their data, that's how they are operating, the telemetrics, mm -hmm. the telematics of how the cluster is operating. We have that. We can see that from them and from all of our other customers that we had for the last six years. Mm -hmm. So now whenever anybody of them experiences a failure, we can very quickly correlate that across all the other traces mm -hmm. that we have and resolve that failure much quicker than any of our competition can. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, we also do what's called predictive maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, that's mm -hmm. where we can even predict that a customer is gonna have failure. We, we call them up and tell, you're gonna have a failure. If you don't <laughs> change this or change that, yeah. you're going to fail. So track record is our third mm -hmm. uh, advantage. And then fourth advantage is the ecosystem. Uh, when you're building a platform technology, like the one that we have, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, companies like Oracle or uh, VMware or Windows or any company is building a platform, their success from, comes from how big of an ecosystem yeah. do they have around them. Mm -hmm. So we have been very focused on building a very big ecosystem. We have more than 1,000 partners okay. that work with us right now. Some of these partners are building software applications mm -hmm. that run on our platform. 
Uh, some of them are building hardware that underlies our platform. So for example, Dell is one of our largest partners and they're also an investor. Uh, Intel is, is our largest investor actually. And some of these are uh, 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 SI, solution integrator vendors like Capgemini or Accenture yeah. that go inside of large companies and implement these right. uh, solutions. So we have the largest ecosystem right now among uh, the other players in the space. What is your recommendation for a software as a service uh, startup that uh, tries to find some distributional channels? So like you talked about Capgemini, which is, I guess, one of the distributional channels because they're consulting yeah. other companies. Yes. Uh, would this be one of your recommendations for a SaaS company to partner with, um, whether it's Capgemini or Ernst Young or whoever? Yes, So that, absolutely. I mean, uh, w when you want to sign the big deals, with the large uh, corporate organizations. Many of these large enterprises, unlike uh, typical enterprises, unlike, for example, Google or Facebook, if you look at a big bank or a big retailer or a big telecommunication companies, they have massive, massive engagements with these large SIs, uh, where they use them to do the implementation. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. It's a, one of the very important uh, strategies mm -hmm. for any company in the enterprise software space, which is the space that we're in, mm -hmm. to establish uh, these type of what we refer to them as channel, channel partnerships. Yeah where they can ca come in and help you sell your software uh, much more efficiently and effectively. I, I will note, however, that we right now are not software as a service. Mm -hmm. uh, again, despite our name being Cloudera, we are not software that you go and get as a service. We are software that you deploy uh, inside of your organization. Mm -hmm. One of these deployment options is to deploy it in the cloud, which kind of looks like a service, but is not really the same. Okay. As, a, for example, a box.net or a uh, uh, equivalent. Amre, let's talk about the, the market development, especially related to the cloud yes. industry. Yeah. W what is your uh, impression on that? What are the major trends happening? Yeah. So uh, cloud is definitely happening and cloud will happen. And there's, it's not a question of if cloud will happen. It's the question of when. When will cloud really take over completely? Uh, when we were starting Cloudera uh, six years ago, as I mentioned earlier, we initially wanted to be a cloud company. Like we initially wanted to do everything in the cloud. But back then, six years ago, Uh, it was very clear that uh, big companies viewed their data, their back-end data, as their blood. Mm -hmm. And nobody wants their blood to be outside their body. They want their blood inside yeah. their body. Now, uh, that is very similar to us. I mean, if you remember, I mean, uh, many years ago when ATM machines came out, maybe you can't remember, your dad can remember. <laughs> <laughs> when ATM machines came out, people were very hesitant to go and put their money mm -hmm. in an ATM ah, machine, okay. right? Because you're, they're afraid. But eventually, people were okay now to yeah. put their money, and now yeah. they don't even think about it. The same thing will happen with data and the cloud. So we think companies will get more comfortable mm -hmm. with having their data move into the cloud, but that will take more time. Mm -hmm. It will take more time than other types of applications. Uh, so for example, if you're building a web app or you're building a website or a mobile app, uh, you're much more likely to use the cloud today. Mm -hmm. But when you're building a backend a data platform for an insurance company, mm -hmm. a finance company, a health company, a government organization, they're still very sensitive about having their data go in the cloud, but that will change over time. Uh, so we are about big data. So for us, the important part is when will companies be more comfortable having their data go into the cloud? And we see that starting to happen at it, it, the beginnings of it right now, but it's still not uh, across the board. It's still like a very small percent of uh, enterprises are willing to have their core data systems move into the cloud. Okay. Amr, thank you very much for your time. Sure.